This is the Spirit and Wellness Show. News and information from a higher perspective. With your host, Harry Wilkinson. Hello and welcome to the Spirit and Wellness Show. My name is Harry Wilkinson. This is the show where we take a look at the days and weeks events, happenings in the world, happenings in the news, happenings internationally, in politics, in entertainment, in, in technology, everything that we hear about throughout our week and our days, and we take a look at it from a higher perspective, from a higher perspective. We use the tools of meditation mindfulness to counteract what can often feel very overwhelming a, a, an overwhelming influx of information that ultimately is sometimes less than useful let's just put it that way and uh We take a look at it from that perspective, which helps us to frame it differently, to move out of the uh, button-pushing uh, effect that many of these uh, media stories have on us, because they're designed to do so. <laughs> they're designed to uh, push buttons. They're designed to evoke responses uh, and uh, sort of... Uh, get as many eyeballs and ears focused on them as possible, reasoning being that uh, they need ratings. Uh, news media and the media gatekeepers used to be, uh, while they were, of course, uh, money-making enterprises to a certain degree, they were mainly... Uh, servicing the public interest. Uh, particularly television. When television news started, it was done as part of a contract with uh, the American people, the public. You see, back in those days, this is before cable, of course, uh, the airwaves were used for radio and then television. And the airwaves are public. They belong to everyone. So when airwaves became available, uh, Congress, in its infinite wisdom, created something called the... Uh, uh, the uh, well, the name's going right out of my head. Anyway, they created some rules by which uh, these uh, airwaves that belong to the public could be protected. And among those rules were that anybody using public airwaves had to meet certain standards and also had to provide a certain amount of information or a certain service that was in the public interest. Now what happened was uh, when radio stations and television stations began to emerge they had to get a license from the FCC, that's the name of the government entity I was trying to remember, the Federal Communications Commission. Uh, that was set up to protect the public airwaves and protect the public interest. And part of the contract that any station had with the FCC was that they had to provide a certain amount of uh, programming for public service. And news was part of that. News was considered to be part of the responsibility that a station had for using public airwaves to uh, make money, basically. Uh, However, as years went by, that kind of fell by the wayside, uh, and news more and more became driven by, uh, well, by commercial interests, uh, and ultimately by the need to uh, make money, and whenever that is the primary uh, goal, then it all depends on 
ratings, how many people you can get to watch your program so you can charge higher rates for advertisers because you can tell advertisers, oh, I have this many million people who tune in every week to this. Uh, so that's probably very valuable to you. Uh, you should pay me so much uh, for me to uh, advertise your product on uh, this show or on this station. So that's how it works. And so now in this era of nonstop 24-hour news cycles and information uh, coming from all directions, from your mobile phone, from your tablet, from your uh, social media page, uh, it, it is incumbent upon us to learn these tools, to use these tools, and to approach these stories. Uh, I find it is a, of less value, although I think important that for a certain part of your day or your week that you do tune out media and all of the other forms. I think that's a healthy thing. However, uh, if you're thinking that you can just detach from it all, uh, it's not going to be, I think, very successful for you unless you're, as I say, willing to live on a mountaintop uh, and uh, jump off the grid. For most of us, we're going to be interacting with these things at some point in some way, so it's best to have healthy tools in which to deal with it. And one of the best tools is to actually go into these stories and realize that, well, and I go to a much higher level here than many are willing to go, but I say that it helps me to remember that everything around us is illusion in a way. We are creating it on a, an energetic level, at a higher level, at a metaphysical level, if you will. And we're creating these things for a reason, to have experiences that ultimately lead to our reconnecting with and remembering our oneness and the truth of who and what we really are. So in a nutshell, that's what these tools help us do. Uh, it's actually a very interesting message. It's actually a very interesting uh, uh, call to action when you're hearing something, whether it's the latest news about what's going on in uh, you know, uh, the White House or Congress or uh, uh, abroad or whatever it is. When those things start to push buttons for you, when those things start to make you feel whatever it might be discomfort overwhelming uh sadness that is a very important cue it's like um uh, uh pain or uh, symptoms in an illness it tells you to pay attention you can't just uh well you can but it won't help to just ignore it so you go into it, you feel it, and you recognize the truth of it, that this is a creation. And this creation is something that is ultimately leading to your taking the energy that you put into it to begin with to make it a very real illusion, taking it back, recognizing the truth of who and what you are, and the brilliance, by the way, of the illusions that you create, the depth and... Uh, and the detail uh, so powerful that it makes you have these feelings and these worries and these concerns that's an amazing uh, amazing uh, thing that's an amazing talent that we have to create this world of, uh, of illusions around us but once you go in and you take that energy and recognize the truth of it, it starts to change. But more importantly, you start to change in your understanding and your ability to uh, feel empowered over that which you may feel uh, is uh, outside of you. It's actually within and the ability to overcome is also within. So that is a uh, rather long, winding uh, 
description of that process. I call it a wellness process because I feel like it does help us to deal with what might be toxic information and interacting with it, taking the toxin from it, transmogrifying it into something that it can actually help to expand your consciousness. So on today's show, we are talking about uh, the future of the Internet. Uh, this week was the 30th anniversary of a gentleman by the name of Tim Berners-Lee, uh, who wrote a paper uh, describing the Internet and what it could be and what it could do. And that is con widely considered to be the beginning of the Internet uh, back in, in 1989, uh, when Mr. Lee was writing this paper, the Internet did already exist, but was only used for government uh, 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 government uh, use, uh, mainly in the military, but other also other government uh, uh, offices as well. But the idea of bringing it out to the entire world, to have everybody uh, connected, uh, if you will. Uh, that began in 1989 with Mr. Lee. Uh, the Internet, as I've often said on this program, is, is an actual physical manifestation of what we are at the highest level, which is interconnected. This uh, oneness of well, you can call it a mass brain, if you will, but it's more than that. It's an interconnecting of all kinds of things. And this is a very uh, uh, physical manifestation of something that is, uh, in many ways, uh, our spiritual truth, one of our highest spiritual truths. Uh, so it's, it's not surprising that it has become so important and so ubiquitous to us. Uh, however, there are some things that may surprise you, and there certainly uh, recently in the news are things that have worried people about uh, about the internet. So we're going to talk about that, and we're also going to talk a little bit about uh, Saint Patrick's Day. This being Saint Patrick's Day, uh, now this isn't a religious program, as I've always tell uh, people, but we do talk about religions on this. Uh, a program because we talk about spirituality uh, and one of our main themes on this show is that spirituality and religion are not the same thing they're two very different things that often work at cross currents against one another uh, but that's what often brings us into discussions about uh, religion so people often ask uh, questions about how did certain religious ideas come about or traditions come about so that's what we're going to talk about with St. Patrick's Day we're going to talk about some of these things that are associated with St. Patrick's Day uh, in this country which in this country it's it's not really a it's certainly not a legal holiday I mean stores don't close and banks don't close and um, and in Christianity though it, for some Christians it is a religious holiday in Ireland it is a national holiday uh, so it's uh, very important uh, to the Irish people because you know, St. Patrick was Irish and uh, some of the things that he did uh, for the Irish people are uh, celebrated on this day, which is, I think, the day that he is supposed to have passed away. But we'll talk about that. But first, I think it's time to uh, do a little check-in, a little check-in on your New Year's resolutions. We haven't done that for a while. It's uh, mid-March. Uh, this week will be spring. <laughs> and so, how you doing? Are you hanging in there? Uh, you uh, still fighting the good fight with your resolution, whatever it may be? Uh, one of the more popular resolutions, of course, and one of the more uh, concerning things that people have in, a, in, a, in as far as wellness is, is concerned is... Uh, you know, weight and diet and how to 